Hey everyone, I hope that you can see me and I'm not really so much worried about you hearing me because I know I have my volume up right but I'm just hoping you can see me. Uh, I'm doing this video from outside for something different. Uh, it's just kind of a little bit of a noise pollution in the house right now so I figured it would be better to do it this way. Um, so today, I didn't realize it until after I saw my friend Mrs. Kopic, and it made me think about Roxanne an awful lot. Um, was some was something that she had said, and so uh, it dawned on me that today is exactly one month since uh, Roxanne has passed away. And uh, I wanted to tell you guys, and I'm hoping with the traffic, because I'm, I'll turn my computer around before I shut this video off, so you can see exactly what it looks like from uh, the front of my house. But um, I wanted to uh, tell you about a dream that I actually had last night which really, you know, if it was, I don't know what time it was, honestly, when I had the dream, but it had to have been after midnight, which means we were already on to today, so it was really freaky. Uh, I had actually been watching, or waiting for Roxanne to come into my dreams, because my dog, Samantha, had done this after she passed. I couldn't escape her. I mean, she's like, all in my dreams, and it's like, I, I felt like I, I could almost touch her, but then it's like, I, I really couldn't, you know, and it was, it was hard, you know, to, to have those dreams where it's like, they're right there, and you just want to reach out and touch them, but you know that you can't, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things, and it's very trying, and finally, I went up and sat with Samantha at her grave for a while, and after that, it stopped, you know, it's like, I, I don't know what it was exactly, but it stopped, and so, I had been waiting for Roxanne to do that, and she didn't. And uh, I had been waiting and waiting and waiting, and I thought, well, I didn't want to be completely, you know, like, bugged by it to the point that she was always there, but I just, I wanted her to come and kind of just give me a sign, you know, that she was all right and everything, and I wanted to just see her, like, one last time and spend a little bit of time with her, even if it were my dreams, you know, just as weird as that may seem, I, I kind of wanted that experience again, and I thought it was a little odd that I hadn't had it with her. And so, um, like I said, now, knowing today marks the month that she's been gone, Last night I had a dream, and my mom and I happened to be outside in the dream, and up where her Roxanne's gravesite is, there was a little plot, you know, below hers, uh, another grave, and I'm figuring it was for one of our cats. I don't know, it could have been my old, uh, our old cat Blackie, hearing that I felt was more like my cat. Uh, it could have been him, or it could have even been our cat mittens that we have now that she had died, you know, at some point and everything, and it was her, I don't know for sure, but th there was another animal there, and this water was running off the bank, which seemed really weird, because it hadn't rained or anything, and we, we were looking at the bank in the dream, and this water was running out from these two, these two plots, and uh, we went up on the bank to see what was going on, and all of a sudden we heard this rustling and all this noise underground, and uh, we started to undig the plots, and there they emerged, you know, they were they were still alive. And of course, Roxanne's eyes were still big, she was still blind, uh, the way that she had been buried, and everything. I mean, they, they were alive, you know, just the way that they had been laid to rest originally. And uh, her leash and her collar happened to be right by her grave, which is just ex extremely freaky. So I hooked her up and everything, and uh, we left, and I, I don't know where my grandparents were, but I went to see them, and I asked my grandfather about it, you know, why is this happening, and he said that sometimes euthanasia doesn't always uh, take effect right away, it doesn't work the way that it should, and that basically what had happened was she had been buried, you know, and we figured she was dead, and then she woke back up and was alive again. And he said, you know, he said, this is only going to last for so long, and then she will die and everything, so you have to make the most of the time that you have with her. So, I, I don't remember in the dream, like, if we did, like, an, I mean, I figure we did a lot of things with her probably before, you know, and I, I, I think we kind of did, but yet I'm not really sure. Like I said, everything's not completely clear, but all I remember is when she finally did go to die in the end, she just slowly, you know, just slowly went, slowly, you know, like, closed her eyes, and she had her head right on my chest the way that she used to when she slept with me at night. Every now and again she would lay her head near me. If it wasn't down like on my stomach or my leg or something, she would have her head right up here on my chest. And she had her head there and I held her tight to me. And her body just slowly went limp and she was gone. And I said, you know, I think now knowing that it's been, now that I've realized, you know, that it's been the month, I think that she came to me to let me know that, you know, Mom, 
I'm all right. I, I, it's like I got to spend a little bit more time with her. And uh, since when she passed, you know, I was there above her. Like I, I had knelt down above her, but I, I knelt down looking down on her. And um, I took and uh, I was crying and everything. But I didn't actually, I didn't, I didn't hold her. I, I didn't really, you know, like touch her or pet her or anything. I, I, I don't know why I didn't. I really don't because I mean I was right there. I mean it was I didn't really do much with Samantha either. But I, I mean I did talk to Roxy a little bit and all this and that, but not too much. And before she died, you know, I told her that I loved her. But uh, I I feel kind of guilty about that that I didn't uh, that I didn't do more where that's concerned. But this gave me a chance, you know, to kind of like hold her till she was gone and. Uh, like I said, just more of a chance to kind of spend time with her and whatnot. And I, like I said, I wanted to share that because it had a lot of meaning to me, and I feel like it happened for a reason. And uh, I'm, maybe I'll try and write on that some. I don't know for sure, but I just think that it's like with each animal, I feel like you have like an experience, and a lot of it I think depends on the depth in which you feel for them. And I mean. Um, Samantha's still with me, and I keep thinking of Samantha an awful lot, and I feel kind of guilty, but Samantha was my first dog, and I had her um, for a long time, you know, a lot longer than I had Roxanne, and there was just such a connection there, and uh, obviously I had a connection with Roxanne too, but I don't feel that it was as strong and everything, and so I think if I ever do get another dog, and that's another issue, issue I want to touch on, but... I, I don't think I'm going to get a young dog again. I may just stick with older dogs because I think that they kind of, we have a better understanding of one another. And I wanted to go out on a uh, thing that I, like I said about entering, and, and I wanted to make it clear that I don't know if I'm going to get another dog, and I don't know, you know, if I would, when I'm going to get another dog or anything. But I mean, Roxanne's only been gone a month, and I know everybody means well when they say, you know, well, get a rescue dog, do this, do that, and everything, help another dog out, and everything, and it'll help you, and you, you'll have another enough love in your heart, you know, to be able to accept another dog, and they'll accept you, and everything. But I want to make it clear that I just don't want to hear that anymore. I'm tired of it. Um, my friend uh, keeps nagging at me about a dog and all this and that, and it's like I just I can't do that. Uh, I was trying to figure out. Uh, Samantha passed away back in, uh, I believe it was 2000, well it was 2009, in October, and of course November would have been a month, December would have been two months, and uh, January was three months, and it had been maybe about like three and a half months had passed since Samantha had passed away, and then that's when I got Roxanne, and I think that's why I'm struggling so bad, because I didn't wait long enough. And it's like Samantha was still, you know, it was still that heartache and that. And then I just went ahead and got another dog. And I don't feel like I was able to give Roxanne the full attention and everything that she deserved to a point because I just, I, I still had Samantha on the brain. And so, like I said, I just, I don't want to jump that fast again. Um, but uh, I do thank everybody, I thank you for your concern. And I, I thank everybody for, you know, the kind things that they've said. I actually got cards in the mail from friends. Um, and uh, not too many, but just here and there and everything. Uh, too long. I think I only got two of them. But anyway, and um, I got, uh, well, maybe three. But anyway, and I got a letter from somebody. And it just, uh, it really touches your heart when people do that. Because you don't have to do it. You could just say your sympathies or condolences online. And that would be it. But, I mean, people still believe in snail mail. And... I love snail mail. I mean, whenever I get a letter in the mail, especially when it's unexpected, I practically do a happy dance because it means an awful lot that people would take time out of their busy days and everything, busy schedules to sit down and write you like that. I mean, it's a, it makes you feel really important, really special, and uh, I know I have an awful lot of stuff that I need to send out and need to do, and uh, if I could ever find a job, I would love to do an awful lot more for everybody and everything, especially uh, just some special friends of mine. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to close this, but I wanted to see, and we're not doing too bad for time either, I wanted to turn this around, I'm hoping it shows up, I'm hoping the sun isn't taken away from this, but I wanted to show you guys, of course, here's the, I don't know if you can see the wood pile, I'm hoping I'm almost right, because I can't see, there's the wood pile, that I've got it down to that much, which is really awesome, and if any of you on Facebook saw, like, I didn't do a, like a full picture, but if you saw pictures that were taken around the wood pile, you get like an idea of how much wood was there. And we started with that, 
back in, uh, I believe it was uh, the end of March, and uh, here we are now, uh, we're nearing the end of June here, and that's all that's left. Uh, my grandfather split just a little bit, he didn't split an awful lot, but he did split a little bit. He was out like in three separate occasions. He helped me once with like the hard pieces that I couldn't get. He split those, and then the next time I wasn't able to split because I was in bad shape. I'd hurt my foot, so then he was out and he split. I don't know how many loads he split. He did pretty good. And then he was out another time. And he, I, I remember at least one other time that he split. And um, but other than that, I did it all myself. We didn't bring in any other people, and I said I didn't want it that way, so I've done everything myself with those, those few exceptions and of course he was the one that had the chainsaw and sawed it up. Uh, well there's no traffic. I wanted to show you this is what it looks like. Welcome to my humble abode. And then there's the, as you can see, of the house. And this is where I live. I, um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's not too bad. And I just put myself at the bottom of the screen so I'm hoping that you can still see me. I lost myself. I don't even know where I'm at. Oh, poo. Hopefully I didn't X out. Ah, I can see it, but I can't do anything with it. Ah, there we go. So I just hope that you didn't lose me. I'm hopeful. Let's see. Uh-oh. Ah, there I am. I hope you guys didn't lose me. I don't know how this works. I hope when the thing goes to the bottom of the screen that it doesn't... Uh, that, that I don't go off the screen. Hopefully you can at least hear me anyway. So I'm going to close this. But like I said, I just wanted to say about that. And um, like I said, I might do some writings in that uh, for anybody that's on Facebook and that and keeps up with me. You'll probably see those coming eventually. If, I, if I'm if i able to write, I'm hoping I'll be able to write some. And uh, But I'm, I'm doing fairly good. Like I said, I... Uh, I, I miss her. I think of her every day. Um, sometimes it's harder than others. When I'm down in the mouth and stuff's going on, I really wish that she were there so that I could give her a hug and just be close to her and have her there. But And uh, the walking is still a little tough at times. I mean, when I'm out here walking along the road and everything, I really miss her because uh, those were special times for us. But uh, I don't know. We're trying to make do with what I can do. And we have a cat, so that's helping and everything. I think that that's good therapy, you know, just playing with her because I've become like a buddy to her and the playmates. So that's helping me out too so that's really good uh, but other than that so I'm gonna close this but like I said I just wanted to I wanted to make a video but just to acknowledge the fact and everything that like I said that it's been a month and um, it doesn't seem real you know because I can remember just like yesterday being up there with her and everything and it just uh, it doesn't take any more time anymore it's like a month goes by so fast so it's like definitely appreciate if you have a dog or even if you have a cat for that matter just really take the time out to appreciate them because and I mean even like if they make a mistake or something because they do and we all do that uh, just take out the time to really appreciate them and respect them because they're not going to be there forever and it's just really important to take and uh, just appreciate them because when they're gone you know that's it so just take and try to make the most of our moment and I want to tell you guys thank you for watching this and uh, I love you guys very much, and God bless everybody, and mwah.